Before I start this episode of Fantasy News, when I was about halfway through editing it, the news dropped that Christopher Tolkien, the son of the creator of Middle Earth, has passed away. And it would feel a bit weird to just insert that in the video as another piece of news, and it really wouldn't match the tone of the video, unfortunately. So I just decided to kind of put it here at the beginning. I don't typically like talking about death and sad news like this within fantasy news because I like it to be something everyone can just enjoy and have like an upbeat conversation about about media and entertainment, but it would be very weird for me not to talk about this as well. So yes, a legend within the fantasy community has passed away. The person who really helped make Middle Earth and the way it's represented today in media, uh, what it is, this guy has done an incredible job of carrying on his father's works. And one of the things he really stressed and wanted to live on is the deeper meanings and philosophies within Middle Earth, just going beyond the raw enjoyment of the fantasy aesthetics. So if you'd like to uh, honor him, uh, you know, kind of definitely dig into that idea more. I'll have a couple things linked down below that really discuss the deeper philosophies of the Lord of the Rings and what the um, really hidden meanings are, are, you know, for this series. So rest in peace, Christopher Tolkien. Thank you for allowing us, the fans, to have such a deeper and insightful look into what your father created. And um, now enjoy this episode of Fantasy News, which will have a very jarring and inappropriate tone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your host, Daniel Green, and I'm feeling good today. Are you feeling good. I hope y'all are having a wonderful Friday because that's the day this is being posted. And without any further ado, let's jump into the hardcore, hard hitting fantasy news. Adrian Tipchowski, I probably said that wrong, don't even care, feeling good, has had two new novels attached to his name announced. Elder Race and The Expert Systems Champion, which is apparently a sequel to his very popular The Expert Systems Brother. According to this excerpt, Elder Race tells the story of Lanessi, the low-ranking fourth daughter of the queen. Although no one else appears to agree, she believes that the only way to rid her land of the demon that terrorizes terrorize it is to invoke the pact between her family and the elder sorcerer who has inhabited the tower for as long as her people have lived here hundreds of years at least maybe more it goes on from there, but we don't have the time to get into the full thing, but it looks good. This guy's proven himself as an author. He also wrote the very critically acclaimed Children of Time, which is widely popular in sci-fi communities right now. So this is exciting. I'm pumped for it. Good for you, Adrian, and your wonderful goatee. Man, I wish I could grow a goatee like that. Next news. In Dungeons & Dragons fantasy-related news, Critical Role now has their own official D&D book. That's right, coming out on March 16th, we are going to have the official critical role world available to players. That's a hell of an achievement that they have become so large within this community. Congratulations to them. Moving on, next news. Rafe Judkins, celebrating the 30th anniversary of The Wheel of Time's first book release, published a set photo of Joshua Stradowski standing on a mountain looking very randy. Wow, that is not Rand-esque is what I should have said and how I'll phrase it again. Looking very Rand-esque. And we also got a blog post from Brandon Sanderson commemorating the event. And I'll have, of course, both of those links down below. Feel free to check them out if you want to. In this blog post, Brandon Sanderson actually does point out that The Wheel of Time is eligible for the Best Series nomination at the Hugo Awards. That's incredible and something I hope we could actually see come to fruition. Check it out if you'd like to, of course, right down there. Now jumping into just two quick bits of Witcher news. It seems that Witcher wave is finally dying out now that the series has been out for a minute, but Orbit Books is claiming they have sold over 500 thousand copies of Witcher books since the series release. A tremendous spike, but one that obviously should have been predicted given the series success over at Netflix. I've seen multiple people commenting that Witcher books in their local Barnes and Noble or whatever bookstore they're going to are completely sold out. So all this just adds up for me. We also got a quick photo from the series showrunner talking about scouting locations for season two. And that's the end of The Witcher news for today. And now seemingly back from the dead, we're getting some Game of Thrones news, or as I should say, House of the Dragon news. This article boldly claims Game of Thrones prequel House of the Dragons to launch in 2022. But the actual quote they got from someone involved with the show was, my guess is sometime in 2022. So no, it's not 
for sure 2022 that's a guess and he goes on to talk about how they have started writing but that's as far as they've gotten so far and now in hulu stepping up their fantasy sci-fi news we have them ordering a pilot for nadi akorafor's binti series this series has made waves in certain circles unfortunately i have not read it but it's always cool to see something like this picked up by a major streaming service like hulu and now in disappointing for dark tower fans it seems amazon has passed on the scripts for adapting it as a series but it makes sense with their plate currently full with the several other fantasy series they are working on. Sorry, Dark Tower fans, myself included. Sorry, Daniel. But the Dark Tower will continue to be shopped around until a studio picks it up. And now time for some opinions here. The Halo TV series gave reporters a first look at the Master Chief armor. Unfortunately, we weren't actually able to see any. They just showed reporters and were told them not to take any images. And then from there, the reporters said, yes, it's true. It's accurate. It looks good. Let me go on a little bit of a tangent here. Halo's story, at least from what I remember in the games, is truly awesome. And if I was going to adapt this series, I would just make it let's just make the story change as much as we have to, but make the story of the first couple of games. So I've decided to cut what I said here because after doing some further research into what has been said about this TV series, I really can't tell how loyal they're going to be to the game versus creating a new story and respecting the canon. They have said online that they are going to absolutely respect the canon of the universe, and they haven't really said whether or not they're retelling a game or adding a whole new story. They've just hinted that it could be somewhere in between in a more gray area. The best bit of information I've found to support this says, as we think about what it means to bring video game franchises to movie or TV, the biggest challenge can often be finding the right balance between moments fans have already experienced and moments that have yet to be experienced through different medium perspective or creative lens. We are excited to navigate these creative waters to bring you something that is both respectful of what you already know and love, but also new and surprising and enthralling. So it seems they are going to be striking a balance. I'm just nervous for this adaptation because I do have a lot of nostalgia for Halo, so I can't even imagine how the mega fans are feeling right now. I don't know. I just, even as a not mega fan, am extraordinarily nervous to see Halo brought to life, especially with the video game adaptation curse. Man, I hope this is one to break that. If any game can break that curse, it's gotta be this one. And continuing sci-fi news, it seems we are still getting an Edge of Tomorrow sequel. I liked the first one quite a bit. Hopefully they'll just go back to the actual name of Live, Die, Repeat for the sequel. That would be a lot better, but maybe they won't. I hope it just lives up to either its source material or the first movie. It's cool to see a sequel coming down the road. We got a blurred image of them just kind of making it so we couldn't see all the whiteboard stuff they're working on because, you know, spoilers. But yeah, it looks like it's still happening and that's exciting for me. And now transitioning into the superhero news that we can just burn through here. We got a Morbius trailer starring Jared Leto. It seems the video game for Marvel's Avengers has been delayed until September 4th. I think this is great news because that game did not look good to me. Damn it, they an Aquaman animated miniseries is set at HBO Max with James Wan producing. And speaking of DC over at HBO, we got some teaser details for the Green Lantern series that'll also be on HBO. And in the last bit of DC news we're gonna talk about here today, it seems an 80th anniversary of Catwoman comic book series is going to be released. It's just shocking to me to realize that that character has been around for 80 years. And now into some people are gonna have some strong opinions on this news. Apparently with the success of the his Dark Materials adaptation over at the BBC, they're considering adding more seasons. I misunderstood what the article said originally, and after double checking with another one, it seems all this is saying is that HBO is considering green lighting the third season to adapt the third book. Now, it's a little odd how they've already mixed up the first three books within the His Dark Materials series. They've already pulled from book two a little bit for season one, which means I hope they still have enough material in book two to full out a full season. And if they're gonna be pulling from season three to maybe flesh that out, I hope they have enough material to fill out a third season. Or if it's successful enough, maybe they'll even keep adapting the new His Dark Materials books that are continuing to come out. And yes, there are new His Dark Materials books coming out. Sorry for the second interruption in the video. I just wanted to clarify and correct a mistake I made, but it looks like HBO is considering greenlighting a third season before the second season is even finished being written, because apparently
apparently, according to both articles I read, that's just coming in now. And yes, yeah, season two is for sure happening already. And in the last bit of news we're going to cover here today, CD Projekt Red has confirmed they are delaying Cyberpunk 2077. It originally was planned to be released April this year, but they have now delayed it to September of 2020. Yes, I know instinctually this is something that will make people angry, and obviously a lot of people are really looking forward to this game and want it in their hands now. But remember the famous quote, a delayed game is eventually good but a rush game is forever bad. We don't want another No Man's Sky situation where a game comes out and we have to wait months and months for patches and updates for it to finally reach where it's supposed to be. Let them work on it, let them maintain it, and when the game comes out, hey, that's the actual best thing that could happen. We get the full, complete game. I have faith in CD Projekt Red, and this to me is just a mature, reasonable step for a company to take if they're not meeting the deadlines they expected. But let me know what you think. Of course, in the comments down below, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here, and post fantasy news in the fantasy news channel in the Discord server if you'd like to see some different topics covered. I'm always open to see what you all want to hear my opinions on. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. And of course, I would like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreon, Thirsty Librarian. Certainly an interesting name you got there. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.